Shield Maidens are my new favourite unit in this game. Ever since the buff they received this season, I've been trying to understand how to play them. I think I cracked the code and I'm performing extremely well on them in most games now. They are the most complex unit in the game and I know a lot of people are having difficulty playing with this unit. So let me teach you the ins and outs. Do note that you need to be a heavy frontline hero to play them well, but once you master them, they are by far the most adaptive, tough and flexible frontline unit with an unbelievably high skill ceiling. Here, let me show you. Here is a ranked field battle, a classic 5-4 point B. I enter the point and spot some enemy cav coming in, so I get my shield maidens into formation to protect them. Do know that shield maidens have near 100% damage immunity to most cav chargers while in formation, so always be ready to brace them in formation. Once the team arrives, I follow my model onto the point, giving them a defense buff and start tanking not one, but two complete model chargers from the front. I take some heavy losses, but this is a very good trade. Most of my unit death is coming from enemies ranged from the back. It's better if I take the damage instead of my allies, because shield maidens can buff allies even when there are few units left. 24 kills and some maidens still alive. Now I can switch to support mode and aim to buff my team. I charge to give the team a 20% damage buff, which takes out the stragglers on point, and with that done, I wait for my team to move forward and provide another defense buff to finish off the enemy team. The defense buff that gives allies 150 armor is really strong. It basically gives all allies within range 15-20% to damage reduction for 10 seconds, and using this, we broke the power balance and took control of the area. Unfortunately here, we got charged by a Hussar charge from the back, and I only got to take out the enemy grape shot before being killed off with my maidens. But this was enough to take B point from the enemy with 34 unit kills and tons of assist points. Now, here is another clip where I was trying to understand how to best use the maidens, and one thing I've learned the hard way was to always stick to an ally model, preferably to buff them with our defense buff first while entering any battle. The reason is twofold. One is to avoid going into the battle first and losing the opportunity to do any buffs. And a second is to avoid cavalry charges, which Mordal is the perfect deterrence. The core of playing Shield Maidens is to be the parasite living off of another unit. To have the team be your means to project power. And the more allies you have in your zone of buffing, the more assist points you get. And the more assurance that no enemy can push you over. And thus giving you the opportunity to deal consistent damage on the front lines. While being on the front lines is one aspect, being the fastest infantry unit in the game is another important aspect of Shield Maidens. You get to freely pick and choose your fights, and also retreat from ones you're about to lose. Now enough of what you should do, let's talk about how to actually play Shield Maidens. This is a clip of how not to use Maidens. You do not want to charge to go into any strong opponent, and you should never use Shield Bash. First, both of these skills deal good damage, but they sacrifice survivability too much. Between these skills, they drop their block, but worst of all, they place the Maidens into the enemy where block does not matter. On top of this, they have no crowd control immunity that the cover commander provides when they successfully block the damage source. That said, you can still succeed with it like here, but that's betting on luck, and why do so when there's a more safe and more efficient way to play the Maidens? So, how do I play my Maidens optimally? Let's talk about my setup. I've gone full bottom to take advantage of the 30% increased slashing penetration while in sword mode. With this playstyle, you'll be using sword mode the majority of the time. As for doctrines, I've got the best defensive block doctrine, the spear armor doctrine, and the storm doctrine that adds 10% mobility. But if you don't have this, go either breakthrough or healing. And there's also leadership, the must have on frontier. As for gameplay, you want to focus on using sword cover commander. This is done by entering Cover Commander in Spear Mode, then switching to Sword. That's it. Don't use Shield Bash or Charge since that disables Cover Commander, and in this mode, you'll hit like a truck and have an active block 100% of the time. This is your Fighting Mode. While moving, you want to be in Spear Mode for that extra speed and damage reduction, as well as their bonus against Cav when in any formation. And it's even better if you can hit something before entering Sword Mode, because that gives an extra armor and slashing penetration that's very useful. There is also a hidden ability when you switch between spear to sword while in cover commander. They attack their nearby enemy with two quick strikes that deal two hits killing enemy heroes instantly, even ones that's in expeditions. That should be all the knowledge you need. Now let me show you some footage of just how broken my maidens can be. This is a game from Ranked, one of the last three games before I got marshaled this season, so you can expect some high level gameplay. 
Starting off, I have my maidens on top of the siege tower to look for any opportunities. I know that my maidens have high mobility to escape when needed, and if any heroes fight, I can wipe them with my sword swap ability. So I have the confidence to stay in enemy territory. What I'm waiting for is my allies to push up with me so I can start following up with my defense buffs. We have a unit of Mordor up, and the enemy has started charging with Iron Reapers. And as easy as that, that's one Iron Reaper dead without any losses at all. I move up more to kill anything left, but notice my allies treb. So I position my hero away from the circle to make my maidens avoid getting too close to being hit, while also maintaining pressure on the enemy. And like that, I got another unit of Berserkers, and I'll move back to follow my allies push into point A. Notice here that I switched to spear while moving, this is to prepare for another use of defense matrix. And as I expected, the time was just right to kinda push another unit of Iron Reapers and Berserkers, taking them both out without taking much damage in return. If you know how to play Shield Maidens, they really are the perfect frontline unit. Not only a team player that decreases team unit loss, but they have the strongest presence in team fights to take and return damage. And as easy as that, we took the city walls with only one model loss. There is one last unit of enemy mortal left, so now I choose to charge, but I know they're not gonna fight back. And that's really the only time I use charge other than using it to buff ally attacks. So that's 33 kills and we're still going strong. The next step is to take the supply point, and this is the largest challenge on this map other than taking the home base. As is the usual procedure, we go off the right side. While we move here, I should mention that to play Shield Maidens, you really need to be a tank hero, or you'll risk being killed on the front lines. This is due to how the Maidens attack only things around you while in cover commander. You gain the ability to precisely pick what you want to attack and when you want to leave. But you also need to be very close to the front lines. This is where being a longsword really synergizes with these Maidens perfectly. Part of the map is hard due to how easily the enemy can use cavalry to wipe out the attackers. If the enemy has prepared a counter-offensive, the chances of taking supply are very low. In this game, I push with my ally Mordor a bit too fast, and face overwhelming firepower. The biggest weakness of Shield Maidens is being stunned by Shinji grenades, even more so than any other tier 5 infantry due to lack of damage reduction and an over-reliance on active block to tank damage. And as you can see, I got wiped by the help charge after my Maidens got stunned. Can't do much about that. I survived just barely being a full tank, this is what being on the front line is all about, really, at the end of the day. And that's to sacrifice yourself so the enemy uses up their resources. Luckily for us here, the enemy has positioned themselves in a trap zone, so I'll promptly use it to our advantage. Although I lost my maidens, we have at least given our team's musket enough time to delete the enemy units. And with the treb and more ally support, we can take the supply point. If you ever wanted to protect this supply point from attackers, I recommend doing so on the right side behind cover from here. The enemy's biggest mistake was setting up a defense on a trebuchet hit zone. Alright, I'll finish this game because it's a really interesting one. Next up are my own Mordal. To play this game nowadays, you really must have a unit of Mordal. Their anti-cav and charge burst damage are both essential. They have really become the core of any push and defense, due to how important their cavalry deterrence is. Back to the game, since we took the supply, it is necessary to push the advantage and take point B as fast as possible. This is because the enemy is still moving to get their units while we just took fresh units from the supply. The enemy tries to advance to stun my model with some falconettis in the back. This isn't effective since they brought out at the wrong time. I'm gonna just hold my position as a longsword to heal the damage taken, and because this is a high level ranked, the Falcos are promptly taken out, because it doesn't have a team to support it. And that is B settled. I take some losses, but it's not really too much. It's really the enemy's team's mistake to not just take their losses and go back to protect their home base. Now anything lost here on supply is a waste of resources. Now it is all about taking care of the enemy stragglers and we'll move to the hardest part of this map, attacking the enemy's home base. I'm going to skip the moving portion. The only thing to note is that I switched out to my Fortabracchios and our team is coming from the left side as is their norm. Now, the most important part of attacking this point is to make sure your entire team is ready to push. Don't think about pushing first unless you have a frontline unit, and you know that your entire team is ready to follow up. Here I'll be positioning my Fortabracchios in preparation for the push. As a longsword player, I'll go around the corner to bait out some grip shot cannons 
and keep the enemy's muskets wasting ammo in case they'll use it all up if we're playing the long game. I'll also be healing our team from any artillery damage. And guess what? It took a complete 3 minutes of waiting until finally my team prepares to push. I follow up with my heavy shields to aim my 40 brachios at perfect angles against this model which charges in, all within my 40 brachios attack range. The 3 minutes of constant ins and outs between us shooting at each other, the enemy has finally reached the point where they're breaking up and barely have any units on this corner anymore. I follow up with my 40 brachios to take out any stragglers by using the XV method as usual. Now, another unit of Mordal. I place my 40 brachios again in brace formation directly against it. I see some Sildars and I brace backwards to dodge against that attack and I brace again to take out whatever they have. Okay, following my Sildars, I go onto the point to do some more bracing damage. At this point, the enemy doesn't have much units left, so it's all about us taking out the stragglers. I spot the enemy's grape shot at the back, and I move behind to do a flanking maneuver and use Sally Forth to quickly take out the grape shot and the hero at the same time. I still can't believe some people say they don't know how to use Sally Forth. It's such a good ability assassinating heroes and making sure they're stunned on the floor. Alright, some leftover enemy Mordal, some berserkers on point, and then some heroes that needs cleaning up. For your Brecco gameplay really isn't the most flashy thing in the game, but it is really really strong when positioned at the right place at the right time, stunning the enemy units when it mattered most, even if they don't get the kills. And that's it. The results of the game are astonishingly high assist points, being higher than 1100, taking the MVP even though I wasn't the one doing the most kills. Alright, do keep this optimal shield maiden playstyle to yourself. I want to abuse it as much as I can since it's the funnest thing that I came across since playing Paladins way back seasons ago. Shield maidens are MVP machines if you get the buffing right. I know that a lot of my viewers are also longsword players, so go ham with this newfound knowledge. If you're a fan of reading and gaming, I'm also making my own game on the side, so do check that out. The game has a demo on itch.io and the studio is currently making a rewrite of the script and redo of the art to make it polished. That's all from me, do like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Oh, and here's more Shield Maiden footage for your fancy.